Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, we are back. At it again. And, yeah. <laughs> back at it. Um, so, has anything has anything happened this week, Taylor? Um, well, nothing this week, but, however, last week, I told you guys I was just getting ready to go see Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. And I did, is. in fact, go see it. Did you see it, Savannah? Yeah, I went and saw it, too. <sighs> I loved it so much. I know. It was really cute. I told I, you it was cute. I yeah. forced Savannah to go. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> I really you did. In, you definitely <laughs> influenced me to go. <laughs> Aren't you glad you did, though? Yes. Yes. <sighs> um, it hurt me. It did. I'm not. Okay. Not. These are not any spoilers. No, no, no. We would never do that. But what I'm going to say is it did center around my favorite character. So. Yeah, mine too. Oh, it hurt me so bad. It yeah. was so cute. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, go watch it. It's really good. Yeah. It's so dang cute. It also made me want to rewatch the other ones because I kind of forgot what happened oh. previously. Wow. And they were talking about things that had happened. And I was like, wait, I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> any of this. <laughs> but, That's funny. You well, know. you know, it's okay. But now you can rewatch them, you know, forever and always. Yeah. If you have yeah. Disney Plus. Exactly. Not sponsored by Disney Plus, but wouldn't that be great? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, also, go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, please. But other than that, I don't really have anything else to get into. Oh, I actually do have something else. Oh, what is it? I got an iPad. Oh, I forgot you got an iPad. <laughs> Wait, yeah, rate, so it, rate it out of 10. Oh, definitely 10 out of 10. I have turned into an iPad An iPad person. kid? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, I'll set it up. Like, I've set it up, like, while I'm doing my makeup and stuff. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I also kind of convinced Savannah to get an iPad. <laughs> well, I've wanted one for a while. True. Because I, wanna, I wanted it for Procreate to draw mm-hmm. on it. I love Procreate. So, I did... And, of course, you have to buy the app, too. So, I had to buy the iPad Mm -hmm. and the app. Yeah. Anyways, I did. And um, and the Apple Pencil. But, anyways. (laughs) Let's just not focus on how much money I spent. Yeah, let's not not talk about the scam that Apple is. But... (laughs) Yeah. But, anyways. um, So, I, I was, like, mainly focused on that at first. Like, the drawing aspect. I was, like, did that for a little while. And then I... Um, got Stardew Valley. Have you ever played that game? I've never played it, but I always wanted to. Yeah. I, it's really cute. And I, um, I've been a little obsessed with that recently, playing Stardew Valley. Oh. So. I saw that on the Switch. I didn't know they had it on the iPad. Yeah. And it was, um, I did have to pay for it, but it was like $5. So. Worth it. Kind of cheap. Yeah. Literally, I, too, am an iPad kid. I really don't leave... Like, if I'm going somewhere, I mean, other than, like, around the city, but, like, if I'm on a trip, I'm bringing the iPad. The yes. iPad's coming with me everywhere. And even, like, there's been times where I, like, didn't have a phone or I broke my phone. My iPad was my literal phone. Yeah. So, like, people people saw me driving around the city using an iPad to play music from my, oh my car. <laughs> oh, my God. I love yeah, that. Yeah. It was really that serious. But, yeah. I wonder... Okay, I wonder if I can still do that with mine because I got, like, a newer one and it doesn't have the um, same, like, same You can definitely Bluetooth it, it. Yeah, okay, that's true. Because mm-hmm. in my car now, I plug my phone in, but it definitely, definitely. It has Bluetooth. I mean, so I can, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> You're <laughs> love right, that press. Right. Well, yeah, I love that you have an iPad. I use an iPad literally every single day. I know. And, okay, so the other day, I was doing my makeup, and I was watching that movie, um, My Cousin Vinny. Mm-hmm. Have you seen it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That one. And, and then I was, like, getting into a bunch of different 80s movies, and I was, like, getting into this... I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to be nostalgic for this era that I haven't even lived in, you know? <laughs> no, I totally get that. I think it has totally to do with, that. like, I watched these movies when I was younger, so it's like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, me also saying, like, this iPad is bringing out the movie watcher in you, Savannah. Like, you don't I know. watch movies. 
Who is? Who are we even talking to right now? Are you but, abducted by aliens? Okay, but the thing is, I'm only watching things that I've already seen. So <laughs> that's not true. You went and saw Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, but not on my iPad. Wow. Well, <laughs> you would have if you could have. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, needless to say, I am iPad kid now. <laughs> We love to see it. We really do. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's my only other update. Um. We that's, that's a great life update. Um, you know, definitely not sponsored by Apple, but we would love to be. So, um, yeah. Maybe. But maybe. Okay. So, I can get into my little story here. Let's do it. Okay. So, this one um, is called The Italian Bride. Oh, it sounds like a movie. Yeah, she, um, yeah, I, I'm just going to get into it because I can't just explain like why it's no, called that. No, definitely, yet. definitely. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it takes place in the Chicago, Illinois area, like right outside of Chicago, um, like in the suburbs. So Julia... Bucula, she was born in 1891 in Italy. So, long time ago. Um, her father died in 1913, and after this, Julia and her mother both emigrated to the United States. Nice. So, yeah. Um, they traveled to um, the west side of Chicago, and Julia's three siblings, they were like already there, already had you know, their lives sort of set up over there, but I guess, I don't know if they were, they couldn't take their father over, so they were just, like, waiting over there for, I don't know, but once he passed, they decided to move over and meet the rest of their family. Um, so in June of 1920, Julia married Matthew Petta, and soon after, she became pregnant. And on March 17th of 1921, at the age of 29, Julia Bukla Peta, um, she died in childbirth. No. Unfortunately. No. That's sad. Yeah. And what's even more sad, she gave birth to her son, but her son was stillborn. No. Mm -hmm. No, that's even worse. Yeah. They named him Filippo. I love that name. Yeah, and he was buried with her. Mm, that breaks my heart. I know. So that's sort of the backup, um, the background story to this, um, and everything. They were like just a, a family new to America, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, my family, um, I'm pretty sure came over around the same time. No way. To America. I mean, probably, because, like, that's, like, the era where everybody from, like, over there, like, that's when, like, Ellis Island was open. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. So That's true. I need to do an ancestry, because it's just so crazy, like, you be talking about your family. I have no idea, like, where my people are from at all. Yeah. See, like, I, it might be, for you, it might be that they, um... It was so long ago that nobody remembers, you know? Yeah. Like, your family might have been here way longer than mine. Yeah, maybe. I'm going to find out. I think I'm going to do one of those tests because I need to know. Yeah. I'm kind of scared to do any ancestry tests. Me too, I don't want I don't want my DNA, like, in I, some... I literally think that we have this conversation just about every episode <laughs> of this podcast, but I'm horrified, but I want to know. And nobody yeah. that is living has the ability to tell me anything see that's how i feel too because like i don't want my dna in some sort of like uh you know database somewhere yeah but at the same time like however (laughs) should i just do it (laughs) that's what i'm saying like they probably already have mine anyway right like i don't know um but i i do know that my family came over on like through ellis island so Mm -hmm. i know like around the time at least you know that's so cool and I'm pretty sure at least, um, I don't know, like, maybe not all of my family. Like, I think w- one of my grandparents' families were here longer. But, like, I think, 
um, at least half of them. Yeah, you know? that's so, so that cool, though. Yeah, yeah. No, it does. Um, so anyways, they, they came over in that era. Um, and Julia, she was buried in her wedding dress Aww. in a Catholic cemetery. And she was actually buried at Mount Carmel Cemetery in Hillside, Illinois, which, like I said, it was right outside of Chicago. And this cemetery also was, um, is the final resting place of Al Capone. Oh, no way. And, yeah, and other Chicago mobsters. Wow. (laughs) So that's The mob. That's interesting. Yeah. So it's already, like, this cemetery is already, like, you know, famous or infamous, you know, whatever, for these people. But then also it has this story tied to it as well. Yeah. So. Um, so she was buried in her wedding dress. Um, and this is because in Italian tradition, dying in childbirth makes the woman a martyr. And oh. white is the martyr's color. That does so, make sense. Yeah. So, and I think that's really sweet. Like, she, she's kind of, like, honored for this. No, yeah. You know? And as she should be. Yeah, real. no, definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm also just thinking about how, like, I'm glad we have medical advancements that, you know, this, I don't think this happens as much anymore. Like, for sure. Like, <laughs> so, there's like, one thing I know is if I was, I was born into the right century. Like, I know we want to be nostalgic and, like, you know, we want to go back to the 80s. No, no, no. We were born in the right time. We need the modern medicine to I live. Know. Yeah. Because, you no, know, exactly. me and you would have been up in the mountains in the psych wards for sure. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, anyways, um, so... Right after she was buried, um, Julia's mother started having nightmares. Um, and in these nightmares, Julia was demanding that her grave be reopened. No way. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to stop my story right there and say, like, what would you do if that happened to you? <laughs> like, would you believe that it's actually her calling you from yeah. her grave? Or yeah. would you say, like, oh, it's my mind? No, I would believe it. I would, no, listen, I'm telling you right now, I have dreams all the time that come true. So I would be like, yeah, I need, we need to go reopen that grave. Okay. And they probably well, I, would. Like, I don't know if anybody would believe me, but I really don't think I would care. See, I would, I would maybe go 50 50, like the first few times I'd be like, okay, well, maybe, maybe. But like, she kept having them. So maybe I, w- I would eventually. Like, believe you wouldn't it. go on the first one? Mm-mm. I would. I would. Are you serious? Like, that takes so much to open a grave. Like, are you serious? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but, like, no, but that's so weird, though. You know what I'm saying? Because also, like, yeah. I have to think about, like, I know people in my life who have passed, and that has not happened to me. Like, I have not dreamed that they came back to me, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I feel like, what are the odds that I'm going to do that, you know? Like, I feel like, I don't know. Okay. Well, well, I don't know. She, um... So the the mother, after she was having these dreams, she said that she couldn't explain why, but she like just knew her daughter needed her help. Mm-hmm. Um, and she like fought to um, have her her grave exhumed, but um, that's the right word, right? Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. And she like the, there wasn't an a reason you know so it's kind of hard to like convince them to let her do this no for know? sure for sure because usually you because it, t- it costs a lot too yeah i was and, gonna say like if you have a lot of money you could do it yeah and it, it takes time and money and it's just like yeah you you better have a good reason for it but she really didn't she's like i dreamt this thing yeah but anyways eventually a judge passed down an order to have julia exhumed well good so eventually so she you know she had these dreams right after julia was buried right but it took six years to get her body exhumed what so six years after her burial she was exhumed and julia's mother she ended up getting the money to pay for this from her son henry Mm mm-hmm which later Henry would regret giving it to her because 
and like most of the family didn't want to exhume Julia Mm because they were like this is a waste of money like why are we gonna do this there's no point yeah so they all sort of like this was a big like issue in their family but he did he he gave her the money for it and later regretted um but anyways once they exhumed her Julia's body was found in pristine condition. Mm, that's... Six years later. What do you mean pristine? Like not decayed? Her no. Her skin was still as soft as the day that she oh. died. They say. Oh no no no! That just gave me the goosebumps all over my body. Can you imagine being there, at the grave and them opening up, knowing that it was six years later and seeing that? Like, what would I, you do? I know. I, know. I would pass out. Yeah. I don't know what I would do either. I would probably be glad, though, a little bit, because I'd be like, I didn't want to see something that didn't go Well, that's very true. So, But also, I'd be like, um, is is she alive? Yeah, there's that, too. Is like, is she a vampire? Right, right. Like, what's she doing down there? I don't know. But, yeah, so I guess this, this probably all ran through people's heads. They're like, why is she like this? Why did she not? You know, why she looked like this, she this is not what you expect after six years in the ground, you know. Um, and for those of you, for those of you out there thinking like, oh, like maybe the embalming was just really good. Like, usually that only preserves the body for about a week. Yeah. So, I was going to say, if even that, mm-hmm. if even that, like, And yeah. so I said that she was buried with her son, right? Mm-hmm. Her son, the, um, the newborn was decomposed oh and she was not okay because i was gonna even have the argument later to be like maybe something was in the ground some kind of mineral that would like keep Mm -hmm. her fresh but nope that eliminates that one that's actually one of the theories that people have sent out there (laughs) but yeah but that that doesn't really make sense though because of the baby Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so after this was found out um which is still, like, they they exhumed her, found this, and then this still doesn't really give a reason for, like, why they needed to <laughs> exhume her body. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's weird, but, like, she doesn't, like, does she really need you? Like, there's nothing really I mean, wrong, necessarily. No, they don't think that's weird. Because up, up until the point where they opened it, I would have been like, okay, maybe this lady is crazy. But if I opened it and saw that, I would have no further questions. I'd be like, all right, something weird is happening. I mean, true. But, like, what do you do at that point? It's like she's calling out for her mother in her dreams or whatever. And then you get there. She she gets to her daughter and then sees her like that. And then they just put her back. Like, what, like they just <laughs> what is she put supposed her back? to do? Like, I don't, I don't know. I really yeah. I don't know. I don't know, but they they did end up just you know reburying her. That's um, that's wild. I would have done some testing or something, <laughs> but I know like the times were different back then. Yeah, it was also um, what year did I say? It was like the twenties. Mm-hmm. She died in nineteen twenty one, and this was six years later. So yeah, so, so yeah, they they probably didn't have like yeah. I don't know. I no. don't know what testing stuff they had back then (laughs) definitely not what we have now yeah so so anyways um and probably it would have cost them money like they're not gonna just get this all for free yeah also they just spent all their money on doing this so yeah exactly so um okay well we just said money and my next bullet point is about money (laughs) (laughs) she raised money (laughs) julie's mom raised money um, to put up a statue at her grave. Okay. So, um, she, she sort of just, like, raised money around town, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was going to put up a, a statue, a life-size statue of Julia. And, um, so this statue is still there at the cemetery. It has two photos of Julia on it. So it's, like, the full statue of her. Oh, it's a um, statue of her? Of Julia, oh, okay. yeah. Okay, interesting. And it has some photos on it as well. Mm. So, like, on the bottom, there's, like, 
a part that has like engraving in photos. Yeah. So the photos, um, it one of them is on her on her wedding day, and it's kind of eerie because she was you know in her dress. Yeah. It, she was yeah buried in her dress, and the second photo is one that was taken when she was exhumed. Um, why would they do that? Because she looked... I know she looked thing, good, yeah. but why would they do that? <laughs> they they put it on there, and they put an inscription on there that says, um, like, that this photo was taken six years after her death, and it's written in Italian. Wow, that is so eerie. Like... <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like, mm, I just want to know what made them think that they should do that. I I don't know. So you don't like that? I mean, I don't hate it. I just think it's a little weird. I mean, yeah. Like, it's, I don't it know if Julia like would weird. like that, you know. Yeah. Maybe. But I, I guess mean, this is, like, her mom's way of, like, fulfilling her wishes almost. I mean, like, okay, yeah. well, you wanted me to bring you back up and i took a picture of you and yeah put, she's, put it on she's your like grave. literally julia what else do you want me to do that's like, what i'm I've see that's everything. what i was kind of saying like <laughs> what else do you want me to do here yeah. <laughs> good point so so yeah that that is on the statue and because of this she has been nicknamed the italian bride mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because like the, the statue and everything is her on her wedding day as well so. yeah so makes sense. It's like a big statue of an Italian bride. So mm-hmm. she is the Italian bride. Um, and now we get into some of the theories. Why was she so well preserved, you know, after all that time? Mm-hmm. So devout Catholics in the neighborhood, they say that Julia must be a saint. Oh, okay. I guess it's, you know... I mean, I guess it makes sense, like, you know, k- saints are so holy that they're not going to decompose, is what they, they figure. Mm-hmm. Can saints, I don't know if I'm just saying this in the wrong way, but I thought they could only be men. Am I wrong? No. Okay, I just didn't know. No, um, saints, um, they just have to perform a miracle. <laughs> oh, Okay. Yeah, MBD. I'm pretty sure that's the qualification. It's like some sort of like miracle. And that's like defined a certain way that like, I don't remember. Yeah. Now I feel like I need to look it up. But um, yeah, I think that's how you become a saint. Mm -hmm. But um, I know that uh, it's not just men because for your confirmation, you pick a name, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And it has to be the name of a saint. So. Oh, yeah. Also, never mind. That was so stupid because I know I've seen St. Mary's. Yes. Yes. Like, churches. Is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, did you know that, though? For your confirmation, it has to be the name of a saint? I think maybe you told me once, but I think I had just forgot. Yeah. Most people just pick their name based on, like, what they like. Um, they're like, oh this is a cool name i'm just gonna do that but um you're supposed to go off of like what the saint has done and stuff and i actually had to write an essay on Mm -hmm. mine before i did my confirmation oh so mine's catherine saint catherine saint catherine but i i really picked the name after my grandmother so not (laughs) after saint catherine but (laughs) (laughs) okay now that is funny um yeah Okay, also, I did, in fact, look up how to become a saint, just, you know, so we can know. And it says, like, in the Roman Catholic Church, um, first of all, this status is only granted after death. So, she's got that going for her. And to achieve this, like, status, apparently, you have to lead um, a very virtuous life um, with, like, very strict accord, like, with the church. So Okay. Okay. That's what well, Google says, anyway. There we go. I don't know if this was the case with her or not. Yeah, me neither. And we never will. I mean... Or maybe we will. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I don't know if that means, like, she had to have been a nun, you know? Yeah, that's what I was wondering, too. Like, maybe 
the fact that she was married and had a kid, they're like, no, that's not good enough. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Anyways, let's get back to the story. So they, they thought, like, they're like, okay, she's definitely a saint. Like, that's why she's so well preserved. That was the religious reasoning for it. Um, and then some skeptics say that the photo must have been taken before her burial because they're like, how does she look so well preserved, you know? That is a great point. Um, but in the photo, the casket does look kind of worn out. Mm-hmm. So there's that factor, mm-hmm. I guess. And it, behind the casket, it looks like there's like a pile of dirt. Okay. But I guess that could have that been either have day. Been, yeah, that would have been there still. Were there like records of this? Like, I'm sure there has to be out there, you know? Like, I don't think you can just dig up a grave. Even back then. Yeah. Hmm. Um, there... Well, well, what I will say is that there is no record of, like, the plot changing, but there's not... Yeah. I don't, I don't know if there's any record of it, um, you know... Yeah. No, I know what you're saying. Of, of the... The exclamation. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, there, there has to be, right? Yeah, there definitely has to be. Like, she was probably... I feel like... Their theory on this one, the, the people who are skeptical, are probably thinking, like, she was definitely exhumed. Like, we're not going to deny that. But they took this picture beforehand and were yeah. just, like, trying to cover it up. Yeah, that makes sense. But also, that theory kind of doesn't make sense because why would the family put that on there? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like nobody in their right mind would put a picture and, like, put that on there. Like, that this was taken six years after she died. Yeah. Like, that's not a funny joke. That's not a prank. You know what I'm saying? True. Um, there is, I mean, there's kind of a theory. I mean, not, I'll just, I'll just get more into it. But I do want to send you this picture. Let me look real quick. True. Um, let's see. I wish I, I didn't save it on my phone. I'm like searching it again. <laughs> <laughs> this struggle. It's okay. We're sending it. Wait, what is it I a picture get of? get your reaction. Oh, the of picture. the actual picture. Oh yeah, lord. Yeah, the picture. Yeah, um, because it's on it's on her grave, so it's yeah. No, you're available. right. Available. I yeah, I was thinking about googling it when you were telling me, but I was a little okay. I texted you. Okay. Wow. It's really small. Oh wow. Um, it's really small, and the quality is like you know 1920s. So I mean, honestly, <laughs> I was expecting the quality to be a lot worse. I. No, also, no, no, no. There's no way that people are saying that this is the day that she died. That casket is really beat up. Yeah, see, see. And um, if you look closely, she's not necessarily, like, perfect. Um, perfectly no, preserved. Not. Like, no, if you see not. her arm, her hand. Her hand is severely, like, bloated. Yes. Swollen. So that's how I know, like, this was taken afterwards. But it's still weird, you know? But it also does look like she's just laying there. Like, that yes. is so creepy, Savannah. I cannot even take that. That is so creepy. Yeah. That is so See, crazy that's on that statue. You know, I think, now that I'm, now that I'm like, thinking about it again, her mom probably put that on there because it made her look like a saint, you know? Yeah. You're so right about that. Yeah. So... There is some more um, realistic, you know, scientific theories here that I can go into. <laughs> yeah. So, people believe that, and I kind of believe this, that it is corpse wax that oh. has made her so well preserved. Interesting. So, this is getting into, like, the science side of things of, mm-hmm. of death <laughs> so oh yes you know that is in fact what i studied in college yes so do you know what corpse wax is yeah i think i do but i'll let you explain it since you got it and also there's a word for it but i don't really know how to pronounce it i know it. how to say it is it adipus here yes okay yeah that. then yes i do know what it is yes <laughs> okay <laughs> see this is your topic i should have let you cover it but <laughs> no you got um, it you're doing good so corpse wax is a waxy substance consisting of mostly fatty acids and calcium soaps 
and it's formed during composition of a dead body Mm -hmm. (laughs) um in um and mostly in decomposition of like the fat the body fat in moist or wet anaerobic conditions Mm -hmm. so moist or wet conditions with like no air yeah basically it was preserved by a natural process (laughs) so i um, mean i really do believe that yeah to be true yeah honestly i mean and back but back then like if you didn't have the internet to look up this you would you would think it's weird (laughs) oh for sure for sure and like when you did start telling the story and once i saw the picture i did actually in fact know that it was the adipus here yeah or that's at least my assumption of what it is yeah just knowing that but i don't even know if they knew what that was back then oh really i yeah like genuinely forensic science is like a newer science like closer to the 2000s era so they genuinely might not have had any idea what that was so, do you know how common this is? Because I don't really... See, it's kind of weird to me, because the only thing I was confused about is I learned that it was pretty much always, like, in water. And mm. this is not... She was buried in a coffin. So, like, yeah. maybe, like, does it rain a lot there? I don't know. Maybe. What What if it rained on her... um On the day of her funeral? Maybe. But, I mean... I guess that's a good point because also we're not exhuming bodies like that. So, like, we don't really look at them, you know, true. once we bury them. Mm-hmm. So, I guess it's also true that we just maybe just don't know what they look like after a certain t- amount of time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know. That's something to ponder about. Hmm. Yeah, that is weird. I mean, hmm. Okay, well, um, inside a casket is, like, the perfect condition because of the absence of air so like maybe that definitely oh for sure like for sure that part it. yeah definitely. yeah there just had to be some water trapped in there somehow some way yeah but it is so still like... weird to me that the baby was well but also he was way smaller yeah see it it depends on the amount of body fat mm-hmm. and the temperature yep, yep. which the temperature would have been the same for the baby but not yeah, not his the amount body, of fat. body fat because he's just he was just he born. He's just a so. baby. So yeah, that is what I believe happened to Julia. Um, you know, which is still like so freaky. Like I don't under I don't no, really I understand how that happens. I'm so sorry. But... Like, and you know, it's a natural process. Whatever that was, it's the most disgusting thing I've ever had to come across. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's absolutely <laughs> sick. It's sick to yeah. learn about sick. All sorry, around. I had to bring it up. No, sorry. you're good. All good. <laughs> But it's absolutely disgusting and feral. So yeah, it's crazy um, that that can happen. But yeah, yeah. So another theory that you already mentioned, um, but I'll bring up again is people thought like, what if it was the chemical composition of the graveyard soil? Mm-hmm. But you know that wouldn't explain why her son wasn't, um, or yeah, why her son was decomposed. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. So yeah. Um, that's probably not it. Um, and there's another theory that maybe Julia's mother made the whole thing up. Mm, there is also that. Or because she just, like, thought, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but people say this because she did not like her daughter's husband. Oh. And okay. people say, like, maybe she made up her dreams. Like, said that she was having these dreams. Um, because, uh, she wanted to move her, like, Julia's grave, um, onto a different plot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said before, there's no record of the plot changing. It's always, it's been the same one this whole time. So yeah, kind so, of out. Yeah, that's kind of out. But also, like, what do you mean? Just because she hate, like, is he supposed to be buried next to her? Or is he buried next to her? Like her husband? Uh, no so then what kind of sense does that even make yeah i don't really know i don't know but there is kind of a little bit of proof that like she didn't like him because um julia's married name is not on the tomb not on her like headstone at all Um, oh because like her married name is Mm peta and on the uh 
you know, statue and everything, it just says Bukula. Yeah, wow. And well, that's definitely yeah. evidence that she so definitely that. didn't like him. Uh huh. And he actually remarried a few years after her death, mm. which is like, I mean, they were like young, so I get it, but still. I mean, like a few years, but like, I don't know. And you also, your wife and your child at the same time. Bro. I know. And you know, it's weird. What? But apparently was not uncommon. Um, he named his son that he had with his new wife the same name. Oh, that's so weird. I know that wasn't um, uncommon back then, but that is so weird. Yeah. Apparently it was, it used to be looked at as like charming or something. Like it was hmm. like, oh, you're honoring them. Well, I guess. But it's then... like a, yeah. Mm. I guess I kind of get it, but it's, it's weird. Yeah. I would personally never do it, but. Yeah. So anyways, I don't know, yeah, like, her husband, her mom didn't, didn't like him. But also, she didn't like any of her children's spouses, so. Oh, okay. So this so was, that was just a, a thing, too. an ongoing theme. Yeah, it was just a thing. So. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, and I think, I don't know if, like, she, maybe she, like, blamed him for it, too, or I don't know. It's just, like, a whole thing. Mm-hmm. People just thought that, like, maybe that caused this to happen. But I don't... I I just had, like, a really gross thought. Um, Oh, what? I'm just going to say trigger warning because it's not trigger warning, but this is just going to be a gross gross theory of mine. It's just gross. So, we know she died during childbirth, correct? Yes. Okay. So, if you don't know this, when a woman has, you know, gives birth person gives birth um there's a lot of fluid that comes out of the body like after and like during yeah so like what if all the fluid didn't go out of her body and like that's the water fluid that her body (gasps) was in to cause that like and trapped in the air because you know like i don't know how quickly they buried her after but like possibly Hmm. maybe i don't know weird taylor theory she was retaining water because she was pregnant. Yeah, maybe. Or, like, had just, like, a lot of extra water mm-hmm. slash other fluids, like, in her body. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, weird. I know I know you're just, like, scratching your head trying to figure out how this happened. <laughs> yeah, I really am. <laughs> okay. So, besides all of this, you know, that's weird enough on its own. But people have seen Julia in the cemetery. Julia... The Girl. she is she is the cemetery's woman in white. Can she please just tell us, Julia? Please. Honestly, true. Um, so you can see Julia standing if you stand near her grave at night. Um, actually, in daytime and at night, just oh. like by her grave, you could probably see her. Oh. She um, this could be like just her restless spirit. Nobody, I don't think it's, like, definitely confirmed that it's Julia, but, you know, people just assume since she hangs out by there, she's wearing white. Yeah. You know. hmm One story claims that a young boy was accidentally left at the cemetery, and a family came back to get him, and he was holding the hand of a dark-haired young woman in a white dress. Oh. And he ran to his parents, and the woman in white disappeared. Da-da-da! creepy yeah if i saw that i would be so scared i know but i mean happy that my son was okay but yeah yeah honestly leaving accidentally accidentally leaving your son at your child (laughs) at a cemetery that's your own fault (laughs) (laughs) sorry yeah i mean i don't think that would happen nowadays but i feel like people i don't know maybe that's more of a common theme maybe in the past i guess that's so, such a random place how, how do you not see them you know right like oh we're all getting in the car to leave and just forget <laughs> jimmy behind <laughs> yeah jimmy you're staying there <laughs> with grandma yeah um anyways so if you go to this cemetery julia is in the northeast corner of the cemetery she is um uh you know, like a giant statue, so you'll definitely see it. Um, They say online, like, you should enter the gate off of Harrison Street, Mm 
Mm -hmm. and go in and turn immediately left and you'll see her on the right on the edge Ooh. of the road so that's your directions on how to find her so. well good because i needed them because i want to go see julia i know this is one that i would definitely go see yeah i want to have a seance and see if she'll talk to me true <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe she'll show up without us even having to do anything yeah maybe she'll maybe i'll get lost and then she'll hold my hand and take me back to you yeah see there we go uh, that's really scary julia please don't do that if you're listening oh i was gonna say we had it all planned out well okay no, just switch it. actually not. you can you get lost savannah and then she'll okay. bring me back to you yes yeah yeah there we i'll go. do it <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, that is the story of the Italian bride. I love and that story. I, yeah. I mean, I don't love that for Julia, you know, her death. But I mean, I, well, yeah, that part. But her being so well-preserved, I wonder how long, like, how long does that last, corpse wax? Um, I think as long as your body is in the condition, like, conditions that causes it, it lasts. So, however long. Like, I think bodies have been found in water for, like, way longer than six years that look like that okay so once they exhumed her do you think now she's gonna decompose normally yeah i bet she, yeah because she, it was like open to the air so yeah. let's let's re-exhume her <laughs> she's gonna be gone <laughs> yeah but then that would prove it <laughs> yeah <laughs> because what if we opened it and she was still perfectly preserved <gasps> that would be then good. what yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, anybody in Julia's family, family, you know, contact us. I'm so down to do this. Um, I know they're probably not. That's probably seeming disrespectful, but like, that's just crazy. Like, I, I'm just so confused. Like her family, like the mom, like other than her mom, like they all kind of didn't even care is what it's like giving. They, like, they weren't interested to see? Well, they just didn't want... They were like, why do you need to exhume her? There's no reason. But, I mean, like, after. They weren't like, oh, well, that's strange. I guess they were They were probably like that, but they were still like, there There was really no reason for you to do all this. I mean, yeah, there really... I guess there really was no reason still. Yeah, not really. Like, the only reason... I guess is that she put a picture on <laughs> on the oh no statue. But. That is so bad. Well, that's crazy. That was a really crazy story. I loved it. She was like, "Let's just exhume you for one last picture." For Come one on. last picture. We gotta pic. put this one? on Insta. Yeah, <laughs> the for the Insta. Do it for the gram. Gotta. That's so crazy. Wow. Um. Well, I guess moving along to my story, Savannah. I need you to know. That I know we say it all the time that our stories be connected, but this week it's gonna take the cake for stories <laughs> <Is it really? laughs> that are almost very similar. Oh my god! So much so I was like, wait, hold on, what's the name of the person I'm covering? Because hold up. Oh my gosh, is this like the same thing happened? It's no, not the exact same thing, but very similar. So, okay, I'm ready. Let's get into it. So today, this story is, you know, a little bit of a true crime. But very much so mixed with paranormal. So, you get a little two-for-one special. Um, I have for you the legend of Teresita Bassa. Da, da, da. Oh, okay. Um, so, just going to start off overall trigger warning. This I'm going to go into a little bit of some gruesome details of, like, what happened to her. I think it's important to the story. So, just, you know, want to let you know, maybe skip a little bit at the beginning here if you don't want to hear that but um yeah so this true this story is like so wild so let's just jump right on into it there was a woman named teresita bassa i love her name teresita like that's just a beautiful name yeah in my it's opinion. pretty um she was born in the philippines in 1929 and you know she just like lived her life out there in the philippines until the early 1960s when Teresita was in her 30s. Um, she decided to move to the United States. <laughs> so, oh, so the same thing. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. So she wanted to move to the U.S. to study music. So I love that for her. Um, you know, we love we love a good mm -hmm. music. But um, she actually, like, when she got here, she did study music for a while. But um, I don't know really what changed her mind. But she decided she wanted to change her path and become a respiratory therapist. 
Oh, Isn't that cool? okay. And so what's even crazier than that is that Teresita became a respiratory therapist at Edgewater Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I Taylor, these are really connecting. What I, year did you say this was? Um, so um, this... So what would the year it went down is 1977. Oh, okay. So a little bit after. But. A little bit after, but very similar situations going on. Um, so yeah, it was the night of February 21st, 1977 at 10 PM. The fire department was called to, um, Teresita's apartment to put out a fire. So a little backstory about, you know, what was happening before the fire According to Teresita's, like, best friend, her name was Ruth, she said that Teresita went to work as usual and finished up around 5.30 that day. And then after work, she, you know, went home and she actually called Ruth and they talked on the phone for, like, 30 minutes. You know, typical girly after work phone sesh. And, Mm -hmm. um, literally. (laughs) And then eventually she had to hang up because Teresita was like, I have to go, um, you know, get my house ready for this male guest. And oh. Ruth was like, oh, girly pop, tell me about it. Like, who is coming over to your house? And she was like, it's a secret. It's a boo-boo. It's a little secret. And so Ruth couldn't really get much out of her, but she knew some boy was coming over and she was like cleaning. So she was like, something serious is about to go down. Mm-hmm. Um, But yeah, Ruth never, it was never mentioned like who it was or like anything really about him. Um, So... Later, the um, the neighbors, Teresita's neighbors, actually smelled smoke, and they called the fire department. They didn't know where it was coming from, but um, they soon discovered it was a fire in Teresita's apartment, and, you know, they start pouring the water in, trying to stop the fire, and as soon as they put out the fire, what they discover is absolutely horrifying. Okay, this is where the big trigger warning, so just, you know, skip, skip a couple minutes. Um... In the blaze, they found her body, and it was fully naked under a burning mattress with a butcher knife in her chest. (gasps) Oh, my God. Yeah. So, obviously, the police were called immediately once the firefighters found that, because this fire was obviously not an accident. It was made to cover up this horrendous murder. Um, So, you know, they're examining the scene or whatever, and... <clears throat> obviously they determined the fire had been purposefully set to cover it up. So, but they could not seem to find like a motive for like why she might've been killed, who was out to get her. Like everybody was like, no, we love Teresita. She's the best. She's a hard worker. She's a respiratory therapist. Like she works at a hospital. Like she's amazing. And, um, what it was even worse was that because like the police had no motives, no suspects or anything like that. Um, the fire also burned up all of the evidence that they would have found. Like there was nothing found Mm -hmm, pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, but one, there was one singular piece of evidence that they were able to find from her apartment. Okay. And I don't know how it didn't burn, but it was, um, a little memo note, like a little sticky note pretty much. And it said, get theater tickets for a S and that's all it said. Oh my gosh. And that was it. Um, So this was literally the one and only thing that the police had to go off of, which clearly not a lot. But they were like, okay, we need to figure out who A.S. is. Duh. See, this is why we should never, you should never keep these men you're seeing as a secret. PSA, absolutely not. Always send at least two or three people who you are going to see, hang out with, be with. Not even men, women Mm -hmm. too, everybody. Because you don't know who you're meeting, especially if they're from the internet. Right. Scary. And and we don't even know if this man is the man. Like, that man could have came and went and somebody else could have came in. I guess so. I but don't know. I'm already not. thinking that, I'm already thinking yeah. it was the guy she was yeah, with. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And clearly me too. That, like, and she, the fact that she just wrote out A.S., like, she should have wrote it out. It's just. But did <laughs> she even me. write that? We don't know. Oh, we don't know so it wasn't that. determined it was her handwriting? No. Not 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 at this point in the story yet, no. Um, okay. Hmm. But, so, in the meantime, police were trying to do, like, you know, handwriting analysis and all this stuff and trying to figure out who A.S. could possibly be. And 
Um, but in the meantime of while they're doing that, Tara sees his body was shipped to the Philippines because that's where she wanted and her family wanted her to be buried. Um, and her friends and family, you know, they were just waiting and praying for answers as to like, who did this and why? Cause she was literally just in the United States living her best life as far as her family knew, you know, and her friends. So like, this was super weird. So it was not long at all, really, before um, the lead detective, um, his name was Joseph um, Statula, he received a call that was quote-unquote bone-chilling, and it still remains a mystery to this day. Okay. Oh, wow. So according, My bones are already chilled I know. before you even said that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, according to the call, um, there's this man by the name of Dr. Jose Chuar Jr., and um, this Dr. Jose, he was a co-worker of Teresita. He worked at the hospital with her. And he told the detective that his wife, um, and her name was um, Remibius, um, that she was having crazy dreams and visions about Teresita's murder. <gasps> Wait. Um, oh. Okay, that's crazy. And also <laughs> the fact that it also connects to my story. I know. I know. That's what I'm saying. But can you imagine, because this one, like, this is where, like, it kind of differentiates from your story. Like, that was her mom. But this is a co-worker's spouse. Yeah. Yeah. Like, imagine if Garrett comes to you and he's like, Savannah, I had a dream that your co-worker, like, I had, I figured out, like, how she was murdered. Like, that would be so wild. Has this person met Teresita? Yeah, yeah. I okay. think so. But, like, they okay. weren't super close friends, but, like, they had definitely met at, like, Christmas parties and stuff like that, you okay. know? Okay, yeah. Like, oh she, had, they had worked there for at the hospital for a while. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, let's get into... Okay, well, actually, before that. Before that. So, you know, she's saying, I'm having these visions, but as if the visions and the dreams were not crazy enough, um, he also told the investigator that she would also go into this trance-like state where Teresita would be speaking through her. Like what? that it was his wife talking, but she was like, no, this is Teresita. I'm talking through your wife. Like your coworker, Teresita, like this is me. What? Oh my God. I know. Um, so then, <laughs> just stick with me here, okay? The ghost of Teresita is on, like speaking to this doctor. She said, through his wife. This is his wife, okay? Just try to picture this. Um, quote, unquote. Doctor, I would like to ask you for your help. The man who murdered me is still at large. I am Teresita Bassa. Oh, I... gosh. I would be so afraid. I would be like, I'm sorry. I know you're my coworker, but girl, you're scaring me. See, like, the rational part of me doesn't want to believe it and wants to be like, oh, she's just having, like, you know, some sort of something's ha- like some sort of yeah. um multiple personality or yeah. i don't know something's yeah. happening to my wife not that she's being possessed it's, well same. but like but, but like, like maybe i would believe it i don't know that's just crazy I know. to experience i know i can't i cannot even imagine um so let's see here okay so um she did end up talking like teresita quote unquote allegedly ended up talking through his wife multiple times and each time she told him to not be afraid and that she only needed his help she was like please don't be afraid like i know this is crazy please i'm like please i need your help so obviously the investigator wants to talk to the wife because duh (laughs) like is she okay you know whatever but (laughs) however okay the investigator's like, let's bring Remy Bias in. You know, we got to have a have a little chat with her to see if Teresita really is talking to her. But early one morning, about one week prior to this phone call, when Remy Bias and Dr. Jose woke up, they saw Teresita standing at the edge of their bed when they both knew good and well that she was dead at this point. So how was she standing there? You know, <laughs> so the couple will just immediately wake up. They see her standing there. They run because... Yeah, I would be running too if I saw some. If I saw my dead coworker standing at the foot of my bed when I woke up one morning, yeah, I'd be running too. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> um, they run, and so when they're when he told this to police, 
you know, they were like, okay, so you waited a whole week to come tell us that, you know, your wife's been saying she's terrified of boss and then you both see her at the foot of your bed. Like, why? Okay, but like, they sound crazy for saying that, so. <laughs> well, yeah, that's exactly the response. They were like, well, <laughs> we didn't think that you would believe us, <laughs> but, you know, um, we, you know, we just didn't think you'd believe us, which is completely valid, but they were like, after, like, they were like, this isn't stopping. They were like, it's happened every day. Like, it, it's not getting worse. Like, she's not doing anything, but, like, it won't, it won't stop. So, we have no choice but to come <laughs> and tell you this, basically. Um, so, you know, she kept coming back every day, showing up, and every day she would be talking to them, telling them what happened to her when she was killed. Um, so, now I'm about to tell you the story of what Teresita Boss's ghost allegedly, quote unquote, said, okay, this man named Alan Showery, who um, was also a respiratory therapist and they had previously worked together, um, Alan had come to help like fix her TV that was broken in her house one night just because they were friends from work or whatever. And things apparently took an ugly turn once he arrived because he got jealous of like seeing her like apartment, I guess. Because she had all this, like, really expensive jewelry sitting around. And she was like, oh, well, like, I'm not that rich. My dad bought that for me, like, when I was young. Like, when he took this trip to France. Like, I'm not (laughs) rich, you know, whatever. Um, But Alan got really, really, really jealous. Because he was like, I don't believe you. And you're rich. And I'm not. And, like, you know, I don't know. Rude. Okay, but, like, what kind of person acts like that? (laughs) Like, I, I don't know. I'm gonna come to your house and just be mad that you're rich. Right. It, right. When like, like is she even? Right, and no. she's literally not. But, like y'all work at the same place. You're co workers. Like you know, right. you know she's not yeah. Rich. See there's that too. <laughs> um, and she said that because he was so mad and full of like jealousy, that he wanted her jewelry so that he could make money, that so he killed her, stole the jewelry, and set the house on fire. Um so to like cover his tracks thinking that he was never going to get caught. And so they're sitting there like, okay, ma'am, I just simply don't know if you, if this is, if this is what really happened. But then she ends her story by giving them the names and phone numbers of four people who could identify her jewelry and help solve the case. Okay. What the hell? Like, this is just <laughs> getting insane. Oh my God. Insane. I- I don't even know what I believe anymore. This is going to change, like, my whole outlook on everything. That's what I'm saying. And so that's when this couple, Dr. Jose and his wife, decided to go to the police. When they had the names and the phone numbers of these people, they were like, I mean, I know the story is crazy, but it can't hurt to look into them, you know? And that's what they told the police. So these police officers were like, I mean, as literally insane and crazy as this sounds... We don't really have that much else to do. Like, we might as well look up these phone numbers and people and see Okay, who they and are. also, I'm glad that the police officers actually looked into it. Because, Same. you know, some, like, some people would hear that and just put it aside and not look into it at all. Exactly. I know. I was so proud of them. I was like, wow, doing your job as you should. Because, yeah. like, it's not going to take that long to look them up. It's only four people. Yeah. You know? And, like, they just need to see, like, did they even have any connection whatsoever to Teresita like they have no idea so yeah they did so you know that's amazing and to their surprise when they looked up the four people and Alan because can't forget obviously they had to look up Alan too Alan actually lived very close to Teresita and they actually ended up being like they don't even know if she knew that he lived that close to her so that's creepy and they found out that he did agree to fix her tv that night and they found that out because they actually spoke to um, Alan's girlfriend, who was named um, Yanka. And they found out that Alan actually didn't have any experience with any type of electrical stuff or technology whatsoever. And oh, Yanka even God. told them she literally knew 100% that he couldn't fix a TV. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which was, in case you forgot, so, the whole reason he went over there. So do allegedly. we think that, like, he's the person that she was talking about even though like he was just coming to fix a tv maybe she was just like being playful and was like oh a man's coming over here but it's like not really so that's why she didn't say anything like yeah 
Like, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because that's funny. Like, oh, I have a man coming. Like, exactly. Yeah, it's like, I'm not going to tell you who, but it's like nothing actually happened because exactly. he was She's supposed like, to just, just come and repair something my TV. for me. Exactly. And also, in case you didn't realize, Alan Showery is A.S. Yes. Too, so. Yeah. Um, and like, okay, was that supposed to be his payment, his payment for fixing it? Yes, I think so. Tickets? That's <gasps> what I believe. So. Yeah. But I'm assuming he's like, that's not enough. You know, once he saw the riches rich. and stuff. Because she's so rich, apparently. Um, yeah. So, the icing on the cake, guys. The What seals the deal for this case is that um, Yanka, Alan's girlfriend, when, once the police had told her the story, after they got all of the information out of her, they told her what they knew. And this was like, this is why we brought you in. And she was like, oh... My God, guys, I have the jewelry that you're talking about. Um, oh, Alan claimed that God. he spent all of his money on it for me as like a anniversary present or whatever. Um, so she brings in the jewelry. And obviously, Alan had no way out of that one. And he caved in and admitted to the murder of Teresita Bassa. Oh, my gosh. That See, like the fact that this was just... I know. This crime was solved from uh, mm-hmm. her being possessed. Yep. Supposedly. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I well, and her like ghost fully, in. like fully her ghost, like without her ghost, like there, I mean, there, nobody would have ever known. See this, this might just make me believe in that. Yeah, <laughs> like I know. I know. Like this one's hard. This one's hard because they didn't have no evidence and they didn't even have, they didn't, they couldn't even find who AS was without, without right. her right. eventually coming through and saying It's like that. the only way that this could have been like faked that it actually wasn't, um, you know, her ghost. Yeah. Is that the people the who people. were possessed, um, you know, that, that lady was lying, but yeah. why would she, why would she go through all that? Like, right. Just to say, um, or just to make it look like she had, like, didn't know anything and it was just her ghost saying it all. But it's just like, why would you fake that? Right. Unless, now, I do have a personal theory. You know, we can go ahead and get into it. We might as well. Okay. My own, not a personal theory, but just of a reason why, if that was the case, if it really was not Teresita's ghost that solved this crime, yeah. if it, like, what if, because Dr. Jose, I'm sure, also worked with Alan, because if Alan and Teresita worked together, and Teresita and Dr. Jose worked together, I'm sure Dr. Jose and Alan worked together, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, unless they were in cahoots with each other. But, like... But then, at the same time, for what? And She's then, not rich. And then he, like, was already... They were already getting away with it. Exactly. Exactly. They were going to get away with it. So it doesn't make sense. So mm-hmm. kind of ghost is like the only option here, really and truly. Yeah, like I don't see crazy. a reason. I don't see another reason. Like no other. I mean, I guess sense. there is there is a slight possibility that like he could have known about it and like told his wife. But I don't I don't know. Exactly. I don't think so. Exactly. Because like why? Because then it goes back to why would she fake being possessed and like having a ghost in her house? Exactly. I don't get it. it so yeah, make sense. I but there's no, more. I believe it. Actually, oh, there's more. Okay. Oh, there's more. Not too much more, but there is more. Um, and it, it's it's you know it's not going to make you happy. So, um, once they arrest Alan, he told the police that he originally went over to Teresita's house only to rob her. Okay, because apparently he needed money for rent, and um, so he went over there to rob her. And then I guess once he saw all the stuff, he was like, okay, I need to kill her and take everything. Which I'm like, you still didn't make that much money. Also, you're lying because you gave that jewelry to your girlfriend. That's right. A like, straight up lie. He didn't sell it. He didn't sell it. Exactly. So you're lying. Um, okay. So another little trigger warning. We're going to get back to what he did to her. Um, he... So if if what he's saying is true, right? He's saying like, "Oh, I just went to rob her." He stabbed her in the chest, stripped her naked, and then set the house on fire to hide the evidence. And then 
as soon because he literally for some reason thought he was so rich she was so rich that once he did all that he was running around collecting all the things that he could and then he realized once he had already done all of the things I just said that she only had $30 in the house that's all she had $30 in the jewelry so he ended up taking the jewelry as backup um for $30 and like a bracelet is what he killed her for. See, that's just... Mm-hmm. Yeah, horrible. Just, oh, horrible, yeah. Horrible, horrible, horrible. So, Alan was charged with murder. And at first, he pled not guilty. Um, but after four weeks behind bars, he changed his plea to guilty so that he would eventually be able to get less time. Because he was like, prison is horrible. So, <laughs> I'll say, I'm, I did it just so I can get less time. Which, you know, seems very backwards. But, okay. Um, so (laughs) this is where the legend really, 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 really kicks in because legend has it. Some believe that Teresita's ghost actually haunted him behind bars and forced him to take responsibility and that she was the one that convinced him to change his plea to guilty. Okay. That better be true because Um, I think so too. (laughs) It better because girl, if you can do all of that, you can go make his life miserable too. Yeah, exactly. And then hopefully nobody ever sees her ghost again because she is, you know, passed on. Passed on and peaceful. And I don't think anybody ever did see her ghost again. Um, so, but tragically, okay, very tragically, um, Alan was only sentenced to 14 years after his plea was changed. And even worse than that, he only had to serve five years um, when he was released on good behavior on and parole in 1983, where he moved to New York City to start a new life, which makes me very, very angry that he was able to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, moving on from that horrible, horrible man. Um, I do love the girl boss vibes of Teresita Bassa because, you know... Oh. Definitely. What a girl boss you have to be to come back from the dead and solve your own crime because nobody else can do it. That's right. Amazing. And, you know, I feel like ghost testimonies is just such a crazy concept because it makes it so hard to like, because even though like dreams and stuff are so hard to believe, like it happens like your story that you just told or the story I just told or even the Greenbrier ghost that I talked about in episode 13 she who was also murdered by her husband and then came back in a dream and they were able to solve her crime that way. Yes. See, that's why I thought it sounded familiar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like that one. Yeah, the Green Briar Ghost. So that's in episode 13 if you want to listen to that one. Um, and so Teresita DeBasa also had her own episode of Unsolved Mysteries um, and it was season 2, episode 25 if you want to watch it. And that actually came out in 1990. So it's a pretty old one. So that's cool. But, um, yeah. Um, hold on. I'm trying to... So, what do you think about it? Yeah. What, what, what do you think about this, Savannah? I... This ghost see, like, testimony. I, I mean, I kind of said a little bit already. Like, I think this is, like, changing my outlook a little bit. I'm like, I, I believe that th- that really happened. Like, I don't know. I can't see any other way around it. Like, I really did so much. Like, I couldn't find, really, any plausible theories against it. And that's very, very rare. Normally, I'm finding way more theories of why it couldn't be true than why it could be true. (laughs) Like, doing research for this podcast. But this one has me stumped. And I have to, I literally have to believe that Teresa DeVosa literally came back and solved her own crime. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I I definitely do, too. Love that for her. I mean, I hate that it had to happen to her, but, I mean, I'm glad she was at least, you know, able to get justice for herself. Period. But, yeah, that's the legend of Teresa DeBasa. Wow. Amazing. Crazy. (sighs) Okay, well. crazy. Well, go check out our Instagram to see pictures from this week. They are very interesting. That's for sure. And um, go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, please. But other than that, I don't really have anything else for you guys this week. What about you, Savannah? 
Nope, I'm gonna go play Stardew Valley on my iPad. Mm, nice, 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 nice. <laughs> I'm gonna go um, make some food. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, well, I guess we will see you guys next week. Okay, cue the music. <laughs>